to talk to you about a funding stream that is not new, not any new flexibility or new CMS rule, but it's called Medicaid administrative claiming. And that is, it is not fee for service or claiming for a service, but if you go to the next slide, Medicaid administrative claiming is reimbursement for anything that is done to contribute to the efficient and effective administration of the Medicaid program. So it's been around a really long time. Many states have this in place. It's It takes place in the school systems and the criminal justice system. It's really that those activities that relate to explaining the Medicaid program to someone and helping to facilitate application or discussing with them if they want to pursue Medicaid as one of their options for support. So many of the functions that your care transition staff or your discharge planners or, at, or your local CBOs are doing are eligible for this reimbursement and it is a reimbursement. So in many cases you're doing this and you are able to get reimbursed from your state Medicaid agency um, to do it. So if you are able to get it in place, it's really nice because it's sustainable. It's not a grant. It doesn't sunset. It's just you have to the, the challenge is getting it in place. So if you go to the next slide, I want to show you where this is happening right now that we know of. So ACL has been in communication with states relative to their no wrong door systems. And here's what we know. And this is all self report from states, but the blue States here are states where this uh, capacity is in place for the state's access system. So this is either happening at area agencies on aging, centers for independent living, ADRCs, um, organizations that are part of the access system. And the states in the orange are planning for this. So for example, I'm helping California right now set this up so that it can happen for them statewide in their access system. So the next slide kind of details the types of activities. So I mentioned anything that has to do with talking to someone about the Medicaid program or helping them decide whether or not they want to apply. This would involve conversations you might have about state recovery or any Medicaid rules that people would want to know about. So this is really relevant to discharge because you're having those conversations about what community supports can you get in place? Is Medicaid one of your options? If you're if the person is on Medicaid, you can actually get reimbursed for helping them connect them to Medicaid services. But if they're not on Medicaid, you can be reimbursed for helping them make that decision, for helping that for helping them understand the application process, even for helping them fill out an application with which many of you might already be helping with. So these are the types of activities here on the slide that relate to care transitions. Next slide. So the, the key with Medicaid admin funds, so different than service claiming where, you know, the percentage of state match aligns with sort of the state's, um, you know, wealth or not, this claiming is 50-50. So 50 from the federal government and 50 from from the state or local. And so one thing we wanted to point out on this is that the really the only requirement for match is that it not be matched with federal funds. So that means that state general revenue can be used, local funds, county funds, even funds that a hospital might contribute could also be used as match. Foundation support. So you know, it's really it, it's really a very flexible and it kind of fills in those cracks. Tim's last slide with the different pathways, this would be something that could kind of fill in the cracks, but is not service claiming. So I just want to um, be very clear about this. So this would be a process of if you go to the next slide, how would you set this up or how would you go about looking into this? So you would want to look at the map and see, you know, what where your state is. So if your state is blue, they're already claiming, or orange, they're planning. We encourage you to reach out to ACL at the email address here, and we will help you connect with the people in your state who are implementing this and could potentially add you into the existing claiming that they're doing. And in many cases, you have to justify and prove that, you know, you're, you're basically tracking your time to say, this much of this staff person's time was Medicaid related. 
So that was very quick. I know we don't have too much time, but um, as John put in the chat, uh, we will have a Q&A too, but we encourage you to reach out and, and let us help connect you with the folks in your state responsible for claiming. John, back to you. Thank you, Christina. And thank you, Tim, uh, both for some uh, really good content, something for uh, a lot of our attendees to think about. We do have time uh, and we have built an extended time to have a Q&A. So I know Tim covered a lot of ground in his presentation and Christina touched on a really important piece in the sustainability puzzle, this Medicaid claiming. So we're leaving it open for people to ask questions to come off mute. We did get some questions submitted ahead of time. So I will go ahead and just raise up the first one. Uh, Brianna uh, over in Oregon, uh, she, had a question, sort of a comment saying that uh, they have quite a quite robust CHW program at their organization, and they're struggling to find the codes we can use to capture billing and revenue to help see that this is um, to see their programs are self-sustaining. Um, and she basically says that she's seen some presentations from other organizations that have figured this out. Is there anyone that could help them with this? Um, she has reviewed the transitional codes and complex care, et cetera, but feel like they're missing something. Brianna, I don't know if you have anything to add if you want to come off mute, but uh, I will just say first and foremost, uh, there's certainly you certainly can register if you haven't already to the TA community site and, and look at past presentations that we've had from some of the, our partners, including them from Illinois, uh, I'm sorry, from Oregon, um, that you might be able to find a, a partner organization. But uh, Tim, uh, it just sounds like a question directed to you in terms of making sense or how to make sense of these codes in a way. Um, if there's a, a gap or some bit of knowledge that you can share to kind of help connect the dots in terms of these codes. Sure. And Oregon is one of the states where you, you're fortunate that there's expanded 1115 waiver authority. There's an lieu of service authority where the state has clearly recognized the impact of health related social needs. A lot of that is focused on persons who are having uh, ho acute hospital admissions and readmissions and high utilizers. So that the pathway, well, one, there is technical assistance that can be made available. I, we, have ex we've, we have been supporting sites in Oregon for multiple years, but quickly the, the pathway under the transitional care management and community health integration codes for Medicare, they specifically allow for auxiliary personnel and the, the types of auxiliary personnel that can deliver the services that's reimbursable under general supervision and an outpatient provider includes community health workers. They specifically outline community health workers as eligible auxiliary personnel that would help deliver those services. Separate from that, under the 1115 waiver and in lieu of service that's authorized within the state of Oregon, they call them CCOs or coordinated care organizations, which in other states they call it MCOs. Through each of those CCOs, they're required to screen for health-related social needs and contract with providers to address those needs. A lot of that discussion is also about leveraging community health worker workforce. So I would encourage you to talk to the largest CCOs in your service area and then present to them that not only can your hospital supports expanded screening, but you have a community health worker workforce that can help with the screening and addressing the needs. That's part of the 1115 waiver and in lieu of service, which creates a second pathway for reimbursement for Medicaid beneficiaries in your state. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. I think, so we're an outpatient um, primary care facility. Oh, great. And our, our supervisor of this um, community health worker program is fantastic, super knowledgeable. Like she has talked about all of these things that you're mentioning here and the codes and we're kind of building. So I feel like I don't know what the disconnect is. It's like there's these mystery codes, some like diagnosis codes or something that we're chasing down because even having this understanding, we're not able to bill for their services. So maybe I can reach out offline to kind of talk through more specifics or Absolutely. yeah okay so we'd be happy to talk you through that and we have lots of experience working with outpatient practices uh, to implement this is really built for outpatient practices and so the and the rules are confusing 
or they can be confused and I'll say <laughs> but yes, please reach out. We did get a question in, uh, Christina, about um, Medicaid claiming. We did see the map that you shared um, showing that there are states that are pending or in the process of setting up administrative claiming. And uh, Tammy uh, asked, is there an expected go live date for California to implement administrative claiming? Yeah, thanks for that question, Tammy. So we're working with the State Unit on Aging right now and the State Medicaid Agency. And so I think their hope is to submit something to CMS within the next year. But I still encourage you to reach out and maybe we can have a call because we can kind of explain further what's going on right now. They're doing a time study. So we, we may be able to put you in touch with some of the folks that are looking to, to work that out in California. In California, they have some designated ADRCs, which are a partnership between area agencies on aging and independent living centers and some that are emerging. So it also depends kind of where you are in the state, but happy to, to chat more about it. Thanks for your interest. I wanted to ask if, if I could, Christina, a follow-up question. We, we know this process uh, to set up and establish administrative claiming. It is a process to engage with the state. Um, do you have any guidance just in terms for someone that's in a state perhaps that is going to take on the task of engaging? You know, what's a, what's a reasonable expectation for how long a state could take to sort of roll through the processes and, and get this established? That's a great question. So we, we have some examples of states that have done this really quickly, like within a year to six months, like New York and Nebraska recently did. Um, and then other states, have, Hawaii just got approved, but they had been working on it for about three or four years. So it's a pretty, pretty big range. Um, but but the good news is that in those states where it's established, um, you know, it's really just a matter of connecting in to to the established pathways. And I also saw the question from Virginia. So they're they're starting to think about it again, too. So we can definitely connect you with the state folks in Virginia who are starting to to look at that, too. So it's um, I wish I had a better like, you know, solid answer, but there's a real variety of um, time frames. Well, that's that's fair. It's the that's the if you've seen one state's Medicaid program joke. Um, every if you've seen one state's Medicaid program, you've seen one state's Medicaid program. So understood. Um, I do want to take a moment to just open the open up the um, the opportunity for anyone if you want to chime in with a question to Christina or Tim. I don't see any more. I think. Yeah, if you have an additional question for Tim or Christina on the content that's been supplied, you're, we have time to uh, have those questions asked, so feel free to jump in. I'll give everyone a moment. Christina, hi, this is Ray Manahan from the state of Washington. Um, the way, I haven't looked into those websites that you provided in the slides, so I, I, I do plan to look at those. But do those also list not only um, the admin offices like at the state of Washington Medicaid office, but do they also have the listed community-based organizations who have an interest in these programs? Because I haven't heard anything from, from our CBOs regarding this. If there's an opportunity to connect them, I'd like to pursue it. Yeah, so Washington is a state has, that has had this in place since the 90s. So um, it may just be like so much of their normal <laughs> process that they're not thinking about it. Um, but Ray, if you wanted to have a conversation with Ami Patel from ACL, who is, um, you know, really leads this and myself, we'd be happy to connect you with the folks at the State Unit on Aging in Washington and, you know, make sure that you get connected to see to see how you can plug in if possible. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
And I'll just point out, Christina, and we'll hear from Ray here shortly, but um, Ray, I'm sure you saw the part of the slide with the source of funds for match can be a local source of which I know you are local. So um, it would be interesting to see. And Christina, just on that note, um, are you aware of any states that actually are using local sources that might be a good reference for Ray, just off the top of your head? Otherwise, he could probably follow up without me directly. Yeah, we do. We do have uh, that list off, off the top of my head. I don't know. We we have a a spreadsheet where we kind of track, you know, what is the source of lo local match, and then also what the states are using the reimbursement for, which is a really nice feature of this type of funding source. There's no restrictions on that. So when when you get reimbursed as an organization, it can kind of go for whatever you want it to go for. So one of our star shining examples is we have some partners. Uh, in Nebraska from the Traumatic Brain Injury Association, and they are getting so much match that they're going to be hiring two new staff for the coming fiscal year. So um, they really do a lot of that outreach and information to people with traumatic brain injury about Medicaid. So it's really, really paying off for them. 